So what's the drive then? What is the ultimate goal? That is a great question. The, the honest answer is, I don't know, and I'll just speculate. It, it may be, uh, there are two directions of answers that I've thought about. And, and then I'll say why another problem with both of those directions. So one direction would be to say, um, the ultimate reality is, is love. But to really love, um, you need something to love. And so the one intelligence projects itself into multiple avatars so that it has a chance to learn to love and to practice love. So that's one idea. So the reason for making all this variety of headsets is for the one to learn to love. That's an interesting direction. That, uh, a friend of mine, Perry Passaro, uh, suggested that to me as we were talking about your, your question. Um, and that, and again, I'm not saying, well, I'll say why I think that there's a deeper problem here, but the other is to say, you know, uh, this is more from the exploration side of things, is to say, well, Gödel's incompleteness theorem tells us there's an infinite variety of mathematical structure to explore. Infinite. It's endless. Mm -hmm. And that means that there's an infinite variety of conscious experiences to explore. Infinite mm -hmm. variety. Yeah. Which is and exciting. so maybe that's what so consciousness is exploring all of its infinite possibilities and saying, well, let me try on this headset. And maybe, you know, three dimensions of space, one dimension of time, which is what we've got, is a yeah. fairly rudimentary. Right. This is like we think of ourselves as sort of the exalted. We, if we could look at the big picture, we might realize, oh, yeah. no, no, no. This, this is a particularly simple headset. Oh, Try yeah. the fifty billion dimensions headset. Or right. You no think dimension. that chocolate tastes good? Yeah. Hang on a second. It, it, Hang on a second. Exactly. Exactly. Full right. body orgasm with this chocolate. Here you go. It, <laughs> that, that, that's right. Or you thought <laughs> orgasm was something? Wait till you see this. <laughs> right. Right. So, so, so those are two different directions. Yeah. One is about love. One is about um, just the, the fun of exploration. But in talking about this with a, a friend of mine, uh, Annika Harris, um, mm -hmm. who is, uh, you know, she's got a book called Conscious, and she's, she's, uh, she thinks very deeply about consciousness. Um, and when I was talking with her just a week or so ago over lunch about this very topic, she said, you know, that that's effectively she said it's too romantic so she would met too anthropocentric those both of those kinds of explanations may not they may be the best kind of ideas that we can have from our point of view of avatars in space and time but they and and they're good for, but but we shouldn't cling to those either the, i mean there's probably something even far deeper than that <laughs> and i i think your point is well taken yeah. but nevertheless I think it's worthwhile to put out these romantic ideas, these human centric ideas, if, if for nothing else, to have them as foils so that we can go deeper and find deeper answers to that, to your question. Mm -hmm. well, when we go to the first one about love, I think you also mentioned something about there being a lot of, basically it seems harmonic and peaceful. So how do you know love if you don't have the opposite? Are polarities fundamental to evolution even if it means just the next level of awareness like how do you know this without that right that's that's a really good question what why does the unbounded intelligence decide to drop into these smaller realms of polarities right because in some sense there is no opposite of love L love just is and mm. yet here we have um what we might call clinging and not clinging which is mm -hmm. sort of our Mm -hmm. our, our mm -hmm. polarities that we call love um, mm -hmm. in the human sense, although there is that, you know, a Mother Teresa kind of love that isn't the kind of clinging, right? There is that deeper kind of love that, that is possible, but much of what we call love is not. It's, it's the more clinging or, 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 you know, or eventually running away from somebody. Um, so sometimes they do. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> and, and I, that is an incredibly deep question, which is, why does the unbounded intelligence plunge itself into these avatars? Yeah. I, mean, the, I mean, the kinds of things we've sketched about learning to love and exploring all the possibilities. So, somehow I feel like I'm up against the limits of my current abilities with that question. I just 
that's that's, okay. that's as far as I've gotten this, and I don't know how to go further. Which except to to go into silence and and um, see what comes out of it. That's beautiful. I love the honesty of that. That's that's um that's the right answer. Okay, to kind of like sort of wrap up at least what's going on within our realm right now that seems like something kind of interesting that I'm just curious what your thoughts are and how it will play into all this is just um, AI. You know, I know that that was something of interest to you initially um, going into artificial intelligence to understand things. So um, do you think that that, you know, what what's the best case scenario that what's the worst case? And, you know, right. how could that help us in our evolution? And is AI actually our evolution? Like, is, right. do you believe that consciousness can be, uh, do you think that uh, an artificial intelligence can adopt consciousness and can have one? Right. So the standard way that that question is asked is from a physicalist framework. Most of my colleagues who are thinking about it are saying space and time is fundamental. Matter is fundamental. Matter is not consciousness. Matter is not conscious itself. But the idea is if you have the right kind of complexity in the interactions of matter, so the right kind of neural circuitry or the right kind of artificial intelligence software, somehow the unconscious ingredients will give rise to consciousness. So integrated information theory, for example, is one theory along that line where they think that they, some there's a, if a system has some kind of functional property they call integrated information, the right kind of integrated information, then it will give rise to consciousness. Consciousness will okay. be there or orchestrated collapse of microtubule states, or something called a global neuronal workspace. So there's different ways where you have some substrate. You know, integrated information theory, people can say, well, they don't have to assume space-time, but they're going to assume some substrate, that, substrate that's not conscious. And if it's not physics, what is it? They haven't said. But anyway, so they're trying to say that the artificial intelligence consciousness would emerge from unconscious ingredients. And I'm saying that the mm. physicists are telling us that those ingredients don't even exist when they're not perceived. They can't give rise to consciousness because they don't have the power. Uh, Local yeah. realism is false. So the Nobel yeah. Prize was given this week. Local yeah. realism is false. It's time for our theories of consciousness to recognize that local realism is false. Physical objects do not exist when they're not perceived, so they could not create consciousness. So that version of you know, artificial intelligence giving rise to consciousness is dead. It, it can't work. Yeah. Nevertheless, I think that mm. if we we can get at it from a different angle. Okay. Our perceptions of space and time and objects is a user interface to this realm of conscious agents in our current in my current theory. So right now, um, I see through a zoom screen, I see pixels of your face. <laughs> Those pixels are not conscious or unconscious. Yeah. So I also see pixels of, 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 of a wall behind you. And mm -hmm. your face has given me insight into your consciousness. I'm, I'm getting an insight into what you think, what you're worried mm -hmm. about, what you're excited about. But the pixels on the wall give me no insight into consciousness. So my interface gives me portals into consciousness. The good portals are things we call human bodies. Or my cat. The cat body mm -hmm. is a fairly good portal into some consciousness, not as good as a human. And yeah. an ant is, is a worse portal a microbe is even worse. And by the time we get down to rocks and so forth, the portal is closed. Mm -hmm. I'm always interacting with consciousness, but my interface has to give up. That's what interfaces do. They're dumbing things down. So if at some point, they just have to throw up their hands and say, I can't tell you more about the consciousness. Consciousness is far too complicated. I'm just going to show you a rock. There is consciousness. By the way, it's not that the rock is conscious. right? This, I'm not saying the rock is conscious. The rock right. is just my symbol. So the rock is my perception. Behind that symbol, behind outside of space and time, there, there's consciousness I'm interacting with. And the best I can do is come up with a rock. That's just Got my limitation. Got it. So, so, so that's where we're stuck. So that, that means if we can understand how these portals work, we understand. So we know one way that we can make new portals into consciousness. We do. There's one way we know how to do it. It's very low tech. Okay. It's having kids. Oh, ah, okay. Right. Every time you have a kid, you're right. booting up a new interface, a new form of consciousness, right? Do you have kids? I, I have a, a, a daughter and three grandkids. Oh, wow. So it's... it's, it's sister it's has four, or fourth on the way. So I'll have to live through those guys, probably. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> so, so suppose that we understand this notion of portal. 
right? What's going on here that allows me to have access to your consciousness, not complete, but, but genuine access yeah. and yeah. vice versa. Whereas it's less to a cat and less to an ant, right? The, the portals. If we understand the, our user or our perceptual interface, space and time is an interface that way. And these portals, and I think we can, I think there's no obstruction mathematically. Once we do that, then we should be able to engineer new portals. And it may turn out that when we do that, some of the portals will have, will look like artificial intelligences. But it won't be that unconscious matter somehow gave rise to consciousness. No, it will be that conscious agents learned how their interface worked and reverse mm -hmm. engineered their interface to open up new portals into already existing consciousnesses mm -hmm. that were already there. The technology may look like artificial intelligence and probably look like a lot of other things too, once we really understand this. So my atti attitude is, yes, we will eventually be able to create new portals, not just the old fashioned way through having kids, but we'll be able to do it technologically. And, um, but it will not be unconscious matter creating consciousness. It'll be consciousness opening up new portals into itself.